January 2014, Jordan became the 66th country I visited during the last 11 and a half years of my mission to see every country in the world. Jordan is more famous for its recent ancient sites, such as the various Roman ruins in the north, or the massive and amazing Petra in the south, deservedly one of the wonders of the world. But when I researched about the trip, I found out about things left over from the Neolithic age. There are petroglyphs and thousands of dolmen, a widespread structure that I've seen frequently on my travels. And the ones in the Middle East tend to come in clusters and are sadly in danger of being destroyed. I visited a couple of different dolmen fields in Jordan and at each one met with someone trying to protect them. Then I visited one across the border in Palestine, which is within the borders of a national park and being very well protected. So here I am, close to Damiyar in Jordan. We're not too far, probably about 10 miles from the Israeli border or something like that, maybe even less. And we're in an area where there are tons and tons of dolmen. This is a dolmen field. There's this beautiful one behind me. And we're three orthostats or maybe more because it used to have a door by the looks of things. There's a, a stone in here that's got a, a, a sort of door shape cut into it. We're probably talking like a five ton capstone or something like that. Like I say, there's loads on this hill. Most of them have actually been destroyed, but they, you can see that they were a dolmen. You can see the orthostats and the obvious shape and then the capstone fallen. But there's plenty that are also um, still standing and complete like this one, which is beautiful. You can see the orthostats, three of them, well, probably more, because there's lots of rocks that have been destroyed over the years. And then this would have been the capstone up here. There's one more. Another one here. Another one here. Another one here. This is complete. But all this is in danger due to the stone quarry, which is it's right at the bottom of this hill. I met a professor from one of the universities in Amman and he kindly agreed to show me around and explain to me why the sites in Jordan are so important. Was this like a sacred hill or something? Did they choose Yeah, this? this is the mystery. This is the mystery that never been the, until now uh, explained, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of theories about the uh, dolmen, but for sure uh, there are memorials, uh, there are uh, graves, because I saw a, a lot of bones, of human bones in, in the graves. Yeah. Uh, the most important uh, thing is uh, to find a uh, ceramic sheet uh, in the area and from uh, my experience I can uh, guarantee that's from uh, uh, Bronze Age and it's uh, Middle Bronze. Yeah, that means it's about uh, 4,000 years ago. And the ones here also have a stone at the bottom as well, is that right? Yeah, uh, this is, uh, if it's a grave, they put a stone uh, above the grave, you know, mm. to, uh, to be afraid from the people and even from the carnivores like uh, hyena and, uh, and other uh, animals that may come and take uh, uh, yeah, the... Yeah, of course, yeah. so they can't dig under the stone. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because I've seen a lot of dolmen around the world and it's rare that there's a stone at the bottom. While walking around, we also found curious doorways and chambers carved into some parts of the hill. Uh, are there ley lines or telluric energies in these areas at all? Uh, there is no study. I cannot uh, give you any any results uh, uh, because uh, I don't like to give any imaginations. But uh, for sure, if the uh, the things is so, uh, should be uh, actually the same over here. All over Jordan, there is the dolmen, but each site has uh, its own characteristics. In northern Jordan, we got the limestone plateau. Here we have a travertine uh, uh, deposits and southern we have a sandstone and we saw some through our journey from Amman to the Dead Sea. And we have in the black desert we have a black dolmens, black rock of basalt and look at this construction. It looks like several heavy duty machines with jackhammers, saws, cranes, 
build it, but actually it was the human and the nature. There's a quarry just here next to this one, and you, you had an arrangement with them to leave these dolmen, yeah. is that right? How did that come about? Yeah, actually, uh, they respect our uh, uh, ideas, and that's why you, there's uh, 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 remains of the dolmen still uh, in a good uh, situation. But actually, I, I am afraid that uh, without control, uh, or without fins, or without... Uh, uh, mentioned that as a protected area, uh, they will continue mining because uh, best price, best use. Yeah, yeah. This is the this is the uh, capital. This is the way of money. This is the way of uh, the human thinking. Yeah, we should have regulations. Do you think it would be possible to create um, some sort of national park? Yeah, area. yeah, that should be should be for sure in each dolmen field in Jordan, and uh, maybe UNESCO because the ones in Korea they they have uh, they're listed on UNESCO, aren't they? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe if people yeah, write we, to we, uh, we wrote to the UNESCO, and we have now uh, four sites uh, listed in Jordan, ah. like Kasar Amra and uh, so and uh, but the dolmens not it, not it. Okay. Not it, yeah. yeah. So if someone sat at home and they want to help. What should they do? They write to you, they contact you and say, yeah, I want to help? Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure, I am for that. From Damiao, I went south to Petra to meet a friend of the professors who had published a book describing some new and alternative ideas about why Petra was built. He was also kind enough to show me around on camera and explain his ideas to me. Mamoun then introduced me to Athena Romney, a very spiritual and inspirational woman who is raising money to make clothes for Syrian refugees and is fascinated by a dolmen field in the town she lives in. How many do you think there are? I would say 50. 50? Looks like it. I mean, there's rocks I all mean, over the place. I know. See, like, for example, this one that we're approaching right here. Oh, yeah. You can tell that's another craft one. Yeah. So, like this one here, definitely a former dolmen. And then there's a capstone over there. You saw some being demolished, did you? Okay, yeah, I'm going to take you to this. Okay, so, right around here, these are all fresh piles. Remember I told you there was a night that I came out on a full moon and um, I doused all the, the dolmens to find which one I wanted to go meditate on. All right. So I, I had a, a very clear memory of that one and it, I came back six months later and it was gone. So this is the one that you doused? Yep. So I have you doused it since? No. Has it lost its uh, energy? Or I something? don't know, I will. Yeah, because I laid upon it and now look. Right. It had very, very strong energy. Yeah, so now you see how there's this wall here. So basically, from here in is where the dolmens are. Right. And I think that people have just crashed stuff and pushed it over here and crashed, you know. And luckily this guy hasn't gone to town on mm. this smashing. But, I mean, to me, this, this one right here is proof. I mean, when you can see the indentation still in the soil. Yeah. And I will just draw the attention to the fresh roots, you know, that shows that it just happened. Yeah. Freshly dug. Well, you were here two months ago, weren't you? Said? Yeah. Just, they were all up. Oh, it really pisses me off. <laughs> yeah, it does me too, especially since I went and talked to two different guys. You know, that I thought the first one was the mayor, and then after I told him my whole story, they uh, bring me up to the head honcho, yeah. I talked to him, he promised me that they, they would patrol the area, and, and so I believed him. Mm. That was six months ago. Had I not believed him and just gone straight to, like, somebody, the Minister of Agriculture or anybody, I, I don't even know where I would go. Had I done that, maybe the, they would still be standing. Mm. I f almost feel like taking pictures of them and going to his office and saying, you know, what happened? <laughs> yeah. This road was not here three months ago. Not even two months ago. 
<laughs> but why did they need to bash it though? I don't get it. Why did they need to, to make the road? This is on the side of the road. You know, this is the typical world though. You know, what, what country do you know that they actually care about what's on the land and they go around, they build the road around? Yeah. There's a couple, but not, not many. Here, they just, they don't care. And look, you can see a river. Look at right here. Across the street. Warmer Dolman. This big boy here. But they can be um, reconstructed. They do that a lot in France. What? We saw so many with like concrete, sort of one concrete side to it where they've basically gone there and fixed it and rebuilt it. And Athena then told me some stories about unexplainable things that had happened to her husband, such as seeing a ball of light fall from the sky and then disappear into the dolmen field. Yeah. And, uh, and then maybe four or five years later, there was a crop circle at the top of the land because they didn't have olive trees there. They, at that time they had wheat. And they had never heard of this before. This was back, I guess you would say, in the early 80s. And it was my husband's job to clean it up. You know, so if you think about that, okay, now you've got a dome in field. You've got, uh, you've seen something coming from the sky that disappears and you have a crop circle. Uh, could it be a vortex? I mean, you think about it. Yeah, yeah, and Sedona and, and places like this, the Lake Geneva, there's, Maybe places, there's, there's, there's all sorts of natural fire. vortexes over the world. Mm -hmm. So why not? And there's crystals and a lot of these rocks mm -hmm. and you're finding fossils all over the place. So where does this material come from, right? Mm. It's different. It's right. completely different. Yeah. That's like a... It's I rings. Know, it's like a, Remember how you were ah, talking about the ringing stones? It was ringing over here. Maybe it's because it's grounded. Yeah. Way. Like Michael Tellinger's rocks in South Africa. There we go. That's better. That's what you want. You realize that this thing really rings like a bell and it reverberates for quite a long time. I just heard an interview with him about the stone circles and then the gold mines. And um, did you know about the wheels of Azraq out here? No, what's that? Pretty much like the stone circles in the South Africa, but in the really? desert of Azraq right out here. No shit. Yeah, they found a ton of them. They haven't even researched them yet. They're circles and then they've got crosses in them. And they're all different shapes and all different sizes, like divided, like cut into a pie. Huh. And there's the same thing, just like massive amounts of them. And then you have um, a copper mine that's down in the south. So it's, it's not super close, but not too far away. But I just couldn't help but notice the similarities between what Michael, Michael Tellinger's mm. discovering in, in Africa. He's mm. got the stone circles, and then he's got the gold mine. Mm. We've got the circles with the, with the pie shape and copper mine. Mm. Does it mean anything? Yeah. Is there an association? Who knows? Uh, the stories of his dad's farm, this one, you know, right here, um, I've heard from so many people that the vegetables were huge. Mm. You know, stories, I mean, you know, people that I haven't even met before telling me these, about the fact that his, his father's farm pr produced all of these. Yeah. Very large, I mean, watermelons this big, they were saying. Yeah, Cantaloupes amazing. this big. Yeah. From Tay Bay, I met up with Jay in Israel and we visited an amazing national park in the Golan Heights area called Gamla, with the country's tallest waterfall and some ancient ruins built on a hill that looks like a pyramid with vultures nesting in the cliff faces and circling overhead. But we were there to see the dolmen and they were all over the place. We walked for miles and can see fields and fields of them. So I've crossed the border into Israel in the Golan Heights area to show you another dolmen field. Now this one is part of a nature reserve, the Gamla Nature Reserve, and is very well protected and you can see a, a massive area of dolmen behind me here. There's probably 30 to 40 just behind me here, but in this whole area there's supposed to be thousands of them. But it's very important for me to show you how just setting up some sort of nature reserve or some sort of form of protection for these things can actually have a massive effect. Some of them have been ruined, but we're thinking that that is um, that's just over time, you know, these are thousands and thousands of years old, but most of them are complete and look really nice. 
So one thing that Jay noticed actually is that there's uh, loads of trees that are really close to a lot of these dolmen. You can see this one behind me here. And there's a couple within the sort of 10 meters of here that, where there's a tree actually growing right in the middle and it's actually destroying it as we speak. Now, this is interesting for us because John Burke did a study related to seeds being put on these megaliths and them having increased fertility and increased resistance to, to bugs and, and drought and these kind of things. So maybe this is um, some sort of evidence to suggest that this is actually going on. You know, the seeds that are there are really strong and they're sprouting up right next to the dolmen. These ones that are complete here almost seem to be forming a stone circle. This one like going right around here is not complete, but um, we've also found um, some, some rocks have got what look like cut marks in them. And there's a, there's a few mounds in this direction next to the waterfall as well that, you know, often dolmen come attached to stone circles or standing stones or, or tumulus and, or, or mounds. So um, there's a lot of megalithic um, structures in this area for sure. Here's some collapsed ones. Just walking by, you can see that's obviously a dolmen. There's the capstone of a dolmen. There's literally like counting that quickly to see it. I could probably keep going until yeah. 30. Yeah, if we took a 360 degree photo right from right here, you could probably count at least a couple of They're 4,000 years old. Ones in the UK are 5,000, but there's a lot of people now talking about them being a lot older. So, with a little bit of help from the Western world, we could easily, you know, protect the dolmen that are being destroyed in Jordan right now. All it takes is putting a little bit of pressure on the right organisations, writing some emails, some letters, and we can uh, stop the destruction that I showed you in Tebe. My trip ended in Cyprus after two months and I'm now back in the UK digesting what I have seen. Jordan is part of one of the most densely populated areas of dolmen in the world and it is situated in a very significant area if you look back through human history so they are all worth saving and there are plenty to save. And there have been success stories, although the most common one is about the formation of an archaeological park in Damio in 2010 which I couldn't find. But we thought maybe some support from people around the world could persuade the Jordanians to take protecting them more seriously. We are a growing community of researchers that are willing and wishing to act. Athena has set up an online petition and attempt to raise awareness in Jordan, but we feel like more could be done, and we ask anyone watching this who wants to work with us or has any advice, then please contact us to help us help these dolmens.